You're welcome back to the show and many thanks for staying with us. Well, according to statistics, majority of Ghanaians are Christians. The rest are Muslims and others are traditionalists. Bottom line is that the Ghanaian is a religious person, religious in one form or the other. Religion champions discipline, but the Christian Council of Ghana is extremely concerned about the extent of indiscipline exhibited in the country. They're looking basically at attitudinal change. We'll have a conversation about creating a balance between prayer, hard work, or perhaps smart work. Uh, but first, here is President Kufuado's thoughts on the matter. Today, an increasing number of people seem to think that success in all fields of endeavor is dependent on miracles and not hard work. We come to work and spend the first hour and more, not on the job we are paid to do, but on prayers. We go to all night prayers and come to the work the next day, tired and unfit for purpose. We take out a week for every funeral, and expect our businesses to thrive because we invoke the name of the Almighty. I am eternally grateful to the Almighty for his grace and favor that led to our winning the elections of December 7th. But it would be unfair to discount the amount of very hard work that was put in by many, many people up and down the country. Doubtless, the fervent prayers that we all sent up to the Almighty helped to deliver the results we so desire. But vigilance and dedication on the part of many unsung heroes counted a lot and should not be discounted. I mention this simply to make the point that there is need to keep a proper balance at all times. As it says in Holy Scripture, and I quote, a false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight, unquote. Let me refer again to the good book, where it says, there is a time and place for everything. We cannot and should not continue to hide behind religiosity, to indulge in the habits that have characterized our attitude to work. The churches and mosques have a crucial role to play in the attitudinal change that I believe we need to build a new economy. The change starts at school and with how our attitudes are tuned in the classroom towards the subjects we are taught and the professions we are encouraged to pursue. Classroom as a starting point for attitude now change. Well, the national, uh, uh, the, the Christian Council is embarking on a national campaign of attitude now change. But right after the president said those words, we stepped out to find out just how many people within our reach, for a start, are in church on what is what's supposed to be a working day. Basically, that's what they believe. Uh, Maxwell Agbaba was on that beat. <laughs> Weekdays are typically working days in most countries around the world, including Ghana. But while some get busy with work, others prefer to devote a bit more time to their religion, often in the hope of a miracle or for answers to their prayers. So it is worship time here at the Fitzway International Ministries. It is a weekday. But these worshippers inside here are bringing forth to their maker their own supplications. Inside the church, this woman lies on the floor in worship of her maker. A lot of them here have transcended the spiritual realm. As a way of preventing members who arrive late from distracting other worshippers, the gates are locked during the session. This middle-aged woman would however not allow the locked doors frustrate her quest to worship and simply kneels and cries out to the heavens. George Boateng is a member of the church. 
As a video editor, he believes life is transient, hence the need to fight for his salvation. George continues to hope that his devotion to the work of God is what will bring him his breakthrough. I believe that life is very short and as human beings, you don't know when you'll be called. God can call you at any given time. Have you thought about that? When God calls you right now, what are you going to tell him? Are you really prepared? Where are you going? Where exactly are you going? The Bible says that we should work on our salvation with great fear and trembling. So for me, the little chance I will get, I have to use to serve God. So that was actually uh, yesterday. Uh, that story was yesterday. Uh, but Reverend Dr. Upuni Frimpon, like I said, is General Secretary for the Christian Council of God, and they are flagging the issue of attitude not change. You're welcome, sir, once again. Thank you. It's as if this month is me and you on the show. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we, we know the problem. Mm. I mean, let's tackle it from the solution, uh, the perspective of the solution. Mm. But then let's deal with it one after the other. Mm. Let's stay with the church and the prayer and mm. everything. Mm. Praying on a weekday. If mm. they don't have a job, basically, they go, or even if they've got jobs, or if people are self-employed, then they are, they've got the predisposition to be in church at any time that they want. Is that an attitude that requires change? Yeah, thank you, Gifty. Now, you go to some countries, at least U.S. and other Western countries, and they have what they call counseling clinics, that when people have challenges, especially emotional challenges, mm. you can just walk into any, any such counseling clinics for help. Now, our part of the world, we don't have counseling clinics, and therefore, the churches have come to serve and fill that gap. And so emotional needs, people are struggling with depression and all that. Uh, it's like the place to go is these churches where music, encouragement, words of hesitation, and prayer. And so they come back a bit relieved. Mm. And now you get churches, pastors, who will open their, their sanctuaries, their chapels from Monday to Friday. I must say that... Uh, they are fulfilling a need. There's a real, genuine need that the churches are. But whether it should always be Monday to Friday, because uh, you know somebody said, "Ah, but you don't know when God will call you." But why waiting for God to call us? We we are human beings. We are not only spiritual beings. We are also intellectual beings. We have health needs. We have we have other needs. You know, in the Bible, it's been said that if a person doesn't want to work because he doesn't know when God will call him or her, then that person should not eat. Mm. It seems to me our pastors must uh, find a way of encouraging people to go back and work, okay. you know, even though, yes, we are responding to the need. But those who must go back and work, even if they are selling rice, mm. must rush to the farm, they will be able to find something and come back home to feed the family, you know. And, and workers who must report, because if I engage you and I have made investment and the time that you must work for me to succeed so that I'll be able to pay you, mm. I get a Christian who will want to spend that working hours in church Monday to Friday. You are collapsing my business. It's a bad Christian testimony, okay. you know. And what about the people who say that this is it is based on faith? Uh, if I have faith that going to pray will help me meet the needs that I I, I, I have, then allow me to go and pray. Mm, Gifty, you see, the Christian God is a working God. You know, in in Genesis we've been told that He worked uh, six days and then the seventh day He took a break and and had a rest. You see, when God was working, He was working. You know, if, if, if I, I am in organization and we say that we start work at, say, half past eight, but we'll spend some 15 minutes to come together as, as, uh, as a family and, and get ourselves ready for the day, pray together, share information, the announcement we must give, we'll do that, I don't have any problem. Or during, say, lunch break, and somebody will want to spend some seconds, minutes to pray, I don't have a problem. But if I have to serve customers... Mm. It should not conflict. No, no, the, it your shouldn't. prayer life it should, should not conflict with... We must balance work, work and church activities. It's okay. not fair. If Christians go that way, we are not helping ourselves. God will bless us. 
but as in Psalm 90, uh, 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 verse 17, that God will bless the works of our hands. Ah. So we must work. God's work is, will not just drop. You must so work. if there is no work of the, your hands, then you won't no, get no, the blessing. Manna has stopped dropping. Yes, when the Israelites were journeying on the desert, manna had dropped. Today, manna doesn't drop. I okay. must work. I have 41 staff in my office. Now, if I get any of them who will want to spend, I work for United Nations, UNHCR, if my staff decide to use the time that they must work, because I'm working with United Nations funds, and after all admonitions and, and everything, that person insists that I'll spend two, three hours. If it is your break or your, your, you take a leave or you ask permission for, say, oh, I'll be late for 30 minutes sort of rest. But if after all the effort, you decide that you will use working hours for spiritual activities, give the hours you. That is inappropriate, you say. So tell us about this national attitudinal change campaign that the Christian Council is on. What is it about and what are you going to do? How do you intend... Uh, what do you want to achieve with it? Yeah. You, you see, Gifty, it's been said that a person who cannot change his or her mind and attitude cannot change anything. You know, at the moment we've been told how many times that we find mercury, cyanide in our water bodies, now plantain, mm. oranges are full of cyanide, depending on where you pick them from. And these metals are having effect on in our kidney. I know that's people's business. Somebody is making huge money because you are into gold extraction, but at, at what cost? You know. And this Garamse business, you have real me party financiers and chiefs and big people behind it. But now we are having instances where cancer, cancer, you know, uh, all over the place. And you ask yourself, how long? Something must change but it must start from the mind. Okay. Again, now we have instances where somebody will leave a broken vehicle in the middle of a road. Somebody drives into it and they die. Recently, Kumasi Accra with this uh, uh, timber truck, 19 mm. people died on the spot. How long do we continue recording this? I think it's one of your recent programs yeah. that uh, we are told that five people who take uh, 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 water, out of that five, is it two to three or so, are drinking water that have some human, uh, uh, if somebody is having a meal, the person should forgive us. <laughs> but now this is where we have reached. Mm. And that's just for how long, mm. you know. And that is why we say something must change. Now this one, you don't need IMF, you don't need World Bank. We need a, 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 a political will that we can continue uh, uh, in this way. And that's why we are pleading that this attitudinal change must take place uh, in homes, in schools, like the president said, mm -hmm. in, in, in everywhere. But we need a political will. Our leaders must give leadership. We pray and plead while we are saying that it must be multi-sectoral. We need religious leaders, we need traditional leaders, we need media to embark on this campaign. But we pray and hope, like the president said, and he is calling for attitudinal change, mm -hmm. that he will identify to not just be a platform an excellent speech like this. But you pull all of us together. Our prayer is by the time you'll be leaving office as our president, a brim must be drinkable. Hmm. Must be drinkable. That sounds like a very high target. Hopefully we'll be able to meet it. But let's come back and wrap up on this discussion with how you, are, you intend to carry out this um, national campaign that you talk about are you going to reach out to your members or I, I mean is there going to be some kind of consistent message that hammers on this issue or is it media engagement what's the form what, what's it going yeah, to be like? at the moment and we thank you uh for for uh, you know the space you've given to us we are working more on media connecting okay. with uh, various media houses, not only in Accra, but in the regions, okay. so that we intensify public education. Okay. Uh, but we are also asking our pastors that we must consider these uh, 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 challenges. For instance, the, the, the Garamse thing, the people who are suffering from the drinking, uh, uh, the waters that are affected with, mm. with such metals, cyanide, mm. are sitting in front of us. But the people who also engage in this uh, practice are paying huge tithes in the church. Ah, so now that is why we must pull the pieces together that church pastors must understand that one, those at the receiving end are sitting in front of you. 
they may not appreciate it. Sometimes we push everything to the realm of, of Satan. That is Satan who is causing it. But the water they are drinking it is facilitating it. And then you also engage the traditional leaders and, 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 and the big people who are involved. So we expect that our pastors will raise uh, uh, their voice okay. on, on such matters. Okay. We don't have power to enforce laws in this country. Right. So we can be institution of conscience okay. and draw attention. Okay. And we hope also that the president will, uh, will, will, uh, will come on board with, together with the Minister of Religious Affairs, that can we have a multisectoral approach that we are part of it, media people are part of it, mm. uh, uh, other security traditional leaders, and we sustain it, you know, okay. we sustain it so we can do some evaluation and have results. Okay, we'll say a very big thanks to you. We'll be here and we will follow the campaign. Kelly, hopefully, we'll get what we desire, what we require yeah. of it. Thank you very, very and much. And we'll hope to do this with you because we will pay a cost for doing nothing. Gifted. Sure. Thank you very much. Reverend Dr. Opuni Fimpo is the General Secretary of the Christian Council there. They are embarking on a nationwide campaign on attitudinal change. Hopefully, uh, they're, they're basically looking, uh, focusing on, you know, some of the issues that we have, Galamse, uh, road carnage, etc. Hopefully, it will yield the desired results. You're still here with me, Gifty and Dopia. The show is the Pause. I'm going to take a very quick break. When I return, we'll go to Takwadi and we'll tell you what happened there this morning with the youth who are putting their lives on the line for their road network. Hmm.